On our last video, we were just finishing up problem D, 1D. So let's go over that last step. So we turned this into negative 24, brought this down, brought this down, brought that down, brought this down. These radicals can't be simplified. None of them have pairs, but we do have some like terms here. So you can see on this last step, I went num negative 24 plus negative 5, negative 29, and then I just tacked on the rest of the problem. And that will be our final answer. Okay, let's take a look at these next two problems. As you might notice, they are both FOIL problems. And they are also both uh, conjugates. Radical 5 plus radical 2, radical 5 minus radical 2. This plus 5b, this minus 5b. So you may remember, you may not, back in chapter 4, we learned that whenever you multiply conjugates, the middle terms will cancel. So I like to keep that in mind as I'm working these because then I go, oh yeah, that was supposed to happen. So let's go ahead and start again. They're both FOIL because they're two terms by two terms, two terms by two terms. So let's start the FOIL process. So from F, we get square root 25. Oops, a little bit off the screen. Let me move this. Not moving very good. There we go. Ooh. There we go. So square root 25 from outer, we get negative square root 10. From inner, we get positive square root 10. See how those are going to cancel? Remember what we said? That if they're conjugates, the middle term should cancel if you do it right. So that kind of like checks your work. And then from L, we get negative square root 4. And like I said, when you multiply with radicals, rarely are you done on the first step. There's almost always going to be radicals to simplify. So we have a couple things to do here. Negative radical 10, positive radical 10 are 0. And that's what was supposed to happen because they're conjugates. And then this simplifies and this simplifies. So look at, we had all four things breaking down. So square root of 25 is 2 5, so that comes out as 5, minus square root of 4 is 2, so we simply get the answer 3. And you'll see why this is really important coming up whenever we multiply conjugates. Notice that the um, radicals that are conjugates, notice that the answer doesn't have any conjugates. That's an important thing to take note of for later because we're going to be trying to get rid of radicals in the denominator of fractions and that's how we get rid of them by multiplying them by their conjugate because when we multiply conjugates we just get a number. No radicals. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this next one. Again, keep an eye out. Remember, there are going to be um, the middle term should cancel if we've done it correctly. So let's see. So here we get a squared radical 36. So there's two parts whenever you're multiplying radicals. You have to multiply the outer numbers. That gave me a squared. Then you have to multiply what's under the radical, which is square root 36. From outer, we get negative 5ab radical 6. So everybody good with that? Negative 5ab, and then the radical 6 gets tacked on. From inner, we get positive 5ab radical 6, which, which we knew would happen, right? Because they're conjugates. Doesn't happen with any other ones, just with conjugates. 
And then from L, we get negative 25B squared. So cancel the opposites. 5 minus 5 is 0. That can't be simplified because there's no radical, but this can be simplified. So what's that going to turn into? Square root of 36 is 6, a squared, minus 25, b squared. And remember how I said, once you multiply conjugates, there should not be any radicals in your answer. Radicals are gone. Okay, let's go ahead and practice more on the next page. So expressions of the form nth root of a to the n. So do you all know that these undo each other? This is to the nth power. This is the nth root. So they undo each other. And we just get whatever's underneath the radical. So these are opposites. Think of square root and square. They're opposites. They undo each other. Cube root and cube. They undo each other. So we just cancel that and it pops out. And remember, if n is even, then a must be non-negative because answers to even indices are always positive. Don't forget that. So here we have the fourth root of x to the fourth. So fourth power, fourth root undo each other. So the answer is just x. Ninth root of x to the ninth, again, same power, they undo each other, we just get x. This is the one usually that students have the hardest time with. They forget the rule from way back in chapter four. Whenever you have a, a product inside, this is two times the cube root, that exponent has to be distributed to everything. So what I like to do is I like to put a little one there to get it ready so I don't forget. So we have to take that cubed to the 1, and then we have to take it to the radical. So when we take it to the 1, we get 2, 1 times 3. Remember, when we raise to a power, we multiply. And then this cube and this cube root cancel. So then we get x, y, z. And that's where they got this answer, 8, x, y, z. So don't forget, if there's a product inside, which means multiplication, that exponent has to be distributed to each factor inside. Doesn't work that way for addition and subtraction, but multiplication and division, it does. Okay, let's practice some of these. Simplify each expression. This tells us we don't need to use absolute value symbols because all variables represent positive real numbers. So remember, this is a 2 square root, and this is squared, so they undo each other, and my answer is just 5. And this one is just like the one we did above. 4 is being multiplied by that radical, so that 2 has to go in and distribute to 4's exponent and to the radical. So we multiply exponents, so be 4 to the second. And then this 2 cancels with this square root, and we just get times 8a. So that would be 16 times 8a. Is that 128? Where's the calculator at when I need it? There it is. So 16 times 8, I need you guys here to help me. So 16 times 8, yep, 128. Should have went with the gut, right? So that gives me 128A. 
So just like the third example above, we distributed that exponent. So the 2 goes with the 4, and then the 2 cancels with the radical. So we get 4 to the second times whatever's under the radical. 4 to the second, 16 times 8a, 128a. Okay, this would be a good time for you guys to shut off the video and try these two on your own, and then turn it back on, and you can compare it with my answers. So fifth power, fifth root, they undo each other, so we just get 150 x squared y. So no tricky stuff there. The radical and the power undo each other, so the answer is just whatever's under the radical. Okay, part D. Hopefully you notice that the index and the power are not the same, so they will not cancel each other. So what we have to do is take the power of 2 in here, in here, and here. So we have three separate things to take that power to. So that's going to leave me with cube root 7 to the 1 times 2, 2. So 7 squared is 49. x squared over y, 1 times 2, y squared. So every single item inside the parentheses was raised to the second power, and we just had to leave that cube root there because there's nothing we can do to um, eliminate those because they're not the same number. It has to be a fifth root and a fifth power, a square root and the power of 2. But these are not the same, so the cube root stays, and you just square everything. 7 squared, 49. x squared, and then y squared. And notice the y squared is not under the radical, so make sure when you write the answer, it is not under the radical. Okay, this is what I told you in Chapter 4, just to cross out that you never need to know this. All these... R is just memorization that you don't need. You never have to memorize about special products because you can find the answers by foiling. So why remember all these different formulas when all you have to do is foil? So learn one thing. If it works for everything, use it. Okay, let's go ahead and turn to page 3. So multiply and simplify, it says, for the directions. And we can assume everything's positive, so we don't have to use absolute value. So this and this and this were all problems on your Chapter 4 test. It was number 2. And a lot of people missed it because they did this. Distributed the 2 just like we were doing with multiplication. These are not multiplication. This is addition and subtraction. So we can't distribute the 2. What we learned how to do in Chapter 4 was to write it twice, because something squared means it times itself, not the opposite, it times itself, because x squared means x times x. It doesn't mean x times negative x. So radical 3 plus radical 6 squared means radical 3 plus radical 6 times radical 3 plus radical 6. And now we just have a normal FOIL problem. Notice these are not conjugates like some of the ones we were doing earlier. So the middle terms will not cancel. They only cancel when we have conjugates. So this is a full out FOIL problem. So from F, we get square root of 9. From O, we get plus square root 18. From i, we get plus square root 18. From l, we get plus square root 36. And if you look down the line, you should recognize that every one of those radicals simplifies. That's a perfect square, so it comes out as 3. This is a perfect square, so it comes out as 6. 
these both have pairs because it's 9 times 2 and 